Hey everyone, Baseball Mama 3 here, continuing my series of talking about the main cast of Bleach. Last time I talked about Yasutora Chad Sato, and today we're going to be talking about the one and only Orihime Noe. So Orihime, where do I even begin with her? So Orihime is a character that I don't dislike. I like Orihime, but I would definitely say that she's definitely my least favorite of the main cast of Bleach. Uh, the main cast being Ichigo, Uryu, Chad, Orihime, Ruki, and Renji. Um, but let's just start off with the beginning. So Orihime was first introduced in the beginning of the Substitute arc. Uh, she was the first one of Ichigo's friends uh, other than him to encounter hollows and whatnot. Her brother, who died years ago, encountered a hollow, uh, and became, a, not encountered a hollow, became a hollow. Um, and, you know, th um, this was the beginning of her story. She was a very tragic character. In the uh, manga, the, you know, her backstory was that uh, her, her mother was like a prostitute, and her dad was abusive. So when her brother turned 18, he took her and they moved, you know, they ran away from home. In the anime, I think they changed it to where, like, the parents died in a car accident or something. Uh, whatever. So, you know, she was a very tragic character from the beginning, similar to Ichigo, how his, you know, mother uh, died. Um, and like I said, her brother got turned into a hollow and came to attack her. Um, and, you know, Ichigo and Rukia saved her. Um, right, you know, saved her, but of course, first, her brother, you know, removed her soul from her body and drastically wounded her and it was because of this wound plus being around Ichigo that Orihime started developing spiritual awareness you know she began to be able to see spirits and hollows and you know after the stuff you know at the end of the stuff during the hollow hunting game with uh, Uryu Orihime developed her powers her Shun Shun Rika the power to reject things and you know her powers are pretty unique you know she can create barriers that can stop things and you know, you got, you got the, the the little like Subaki that can stab through things, kind of, and her healing powers, obviously. And after that, we go into the Soul Society arc. And you know, she didn't do much in the Soul Society. I liked how she kind of became buddy buddy with the members of Squad Eleven. You know, that was fun. Um, but other than that, she didn't really. You know, she she, she had a much smaller ro role than all the other characters. Even Chad had a bigger role than her in that arc. Um, her her I think uh, the big memorable moment I could think of that Orihime had in that arc was that um, during the fight between Ichigo and Byakuya, she had that moment with like, I won't back up, I'll be there for Ichigo. And uh, that was it. Uh, and then we get to the Aronkar arc, and in my opinion, you know, the Aronkar arc was be a big point of character development for all four of the four main, you know, uh, human characters. I brought up how Chad, how his thing in that arc was that, you know, when he was younger, he was, you know, the strong man, but now, almost all of his friends have become stronger than him. In the case of Orihime, what she was going through was her quest for you know, independence. She felt that she was dragging everyone down. She wanted to be useful to Ichigo and all her friends. Um, especially since, you know, especially that arc, you know, one of the first things that happened to her was that A, Ichigo was avoiding all of his friends and she felt helpless. And you know, he was all in a big depression. And the second Rukia came back, he was, you know, got chipper again. But also, you know, her Subaki, her her only attack power, got destroyed by a by a Yami. So that was another reason why she felt uh, useless. And of course, the last reason being that Kisuke told her that she couldn't participate in um, the fight against Aizen and the Hollows. Not only saying that her powers wouldn't have been helpful, but that she just generally isn't the fighting type. Um, so you know, but of course, she trained with uh, Rukia and. Um, I forgot to mention that when I'm uh, talking about her role in the substitute arc. Uh, when did you know that the only real fight that Orihime ever has in the series is against the generic hollow that you probably don't remember the name of? Heck, I don't remember the name of it. And I'm not going to bother looking it up. But uh, yeah, you know, even Chad had two or three real fights in the series. You already he made it bad, but you know what? That's fine. You know, she doesn't have to be a fighter. She's the healer. She's the white mage. But really, she doesn't have a lot of cool moments. But whatever, I'll get to that. At the end of the Aron card, she gets kidnapped by uh, Ukiora. 
and it's revealed what her power is. Her power is in healing. It's the rejection of time or time reversal. And we see how ridiculous this is. She regenerates, uh, you know, uh, Grimjow's arm, which had been cut off and burned by Tosin. And later on in, in you know, Waco Mundo, she literally brings uh, Manoli, who had her head blasted off by uh, Grimjow, back from the dead. She can bring people back from the dead. This shit's so pee. But whatever, let's get, whatever. So, you know, she gets kidnapped. Ichigo and his friends go to save her. And um, they bring up how she's been putting the psychological barriers by Ukiora and Aizen. And it comes back and play a few times, but not in any like really big ways. Really, it more fur further to develop Ukiora's character more than hers, but Hey, we actually started getting some nice, juicy character development out of Orihime. Not the only thing we found that are juicy, though. <laughs> but, um, so yeah. Um, so Orihime, <laughs> um, she mentions how she's not... Aizen wants to use her power to awaken the Hogyoku, and she states that she's going to use her power to, you know, erase the Hogyoku from existence. Okay, that's cool. That's nice. She never actually does it, though. But, you know, I, I liked her role in the Wake of Moon arc, you know, when she was trapped. It, it, was, it was good character building. Her, you know, she did all this to save her friends, and now her friends are getting cut down trying to help her. Um, and it gave us, in my opinion, the one legitimately badass Orihime scene when she slaps Ukiora. Ukiora's talking about how Ruki is dead and how they're just throwing their lives away to come save her. And she just runs up, no hesitation, slaps Ukiora. It's made pretty clear that it hurt her hand more than it hurt Ukiora, but she don't care. She is sick of his shit. And I love that scene. But, you know, last really cool thing she does. Um, you know, Ichigo finally gets to her. A uh, little Grim Jow breaks her out after Lily Manoli try and hurt her. And I liked her interactions with Grim Jow. You know, how she was just desperately trying to tough it out and look, why well, not look like a total weakling in front of him? Because I, I guess he'd gut her if he did. If she did look weak, he probably would. Um, and we get to those, like, things like inconsistencies with her powers, like, she can reverse time, but she can't heal, um, the hole that Ukiora put in Ichigo's chest. Now, granted, Ukiora is ridiculously strong, it's kind of, and, and that's, that scene always made sense to me, like, the, the spiritual pressure was kind of like, a, was kind of like pushing away her power, and even then, very quickly, she was able to do it. <laughs> um, and, you know, we get the fight Ichigo versus, a. Uh, uh, Grim Jow, and you know, this moment I consider more of an Ichigo moment than a her moment, but you know, that moment where Nell, Nell, best character in the series, um, you know, she, uh, tells, uh, you know, Orihime, why are you scared of Ichigo? Just because he looks like a hollow? Just because he has all this power? He's done all these things to save you. And you know, she goes like, don't Die, Ichigo, and Ichigo, that awesome scene where he grabs her uh, Grimjow's arm as he's about to attack him, he just goes, sorry, uh, Grimjow, looks like I'm not allowed to get hurt anymore, just cuts Grimjow down. Uh, but other than that, Orihime, you know, that was like her last major moment. A lot of her, uh, I mean, she had some interactions with people, like she interacted with Nell during the fight with Noe Tora. but, you know, and we got some more out of her when Ichigo and fight with Ukiora first began. And like I said, this was really good character development for her. She was kind of becoming, she learned, her, you know, the whole moral was that she wanted to be independent, but she learned that, you know, she can be independent while still relying on her friends and allies. And so, you know, we, but you know, this is kind of undone when we get into the, um, the, the, you, the fight, the awesome fight between Hollow Ichigo and, and Ukiora, you know, it's like, save me, Ichigo. You know, her whole thing was that she didn't want to rely on Ichigo, but then she had to learn that relying on people is okay. But there's a difference between learning that relying on people is okay and asking the man who literally has a hole in his chest dead, Ichigo was dead, <laughs> for help, but whatever. Gave her the cool fight, whatever. Um, and that was pretty much it. After uh, she gets saved, she's not really in the rest of Fate Karakura or Deicide. She comes back in the Fullbringer arc, and this gets to one of my problems with Orihime. 
So characters in Bleach, you know, they're all uh, different races. Ichigo is a human, Soul Reaper, Hollow, Quincy, and whatnot. <laughs> you know, Uryu is a, a Quincy. Chad's a Fullbringer. I thought that Orihime was a Fullbringer too at first, because her powers are so similar to Fullbringers. Fullbringers take items that are valuable to them and turn them into weapons. Like with Ichigo, his Fullbringer says Combat Pass. Uh, Chad, it was the skin on his arms. And, uh, and, you know, Ginjo was the necklace that he had. Orihime, it's her little hairpins, but uh, it wasn't. She, she's like, go on the wiki, you'll see, she's not a full bringer. Um, and that's the good thing, though. Orihime's never really had a race. Like, she's not a soul reaper, she's not a Quincy, she's not a full bringer. What is she? Her pa they, they do mention, like, before Chad was confirmed to be a full bringer, they did mention that Chad's powers are more similar to that of Hollow's. And they mentioned that Orihime's powers are more similar to that of a Soul Reaper's Keto. Her barriers are just like Hachigan's barriers, which are Keto. So I guess we could say that she's kind of like how Fullbringers are like humans with hollow powers. She's a human with Soul Reaper powers, but still, what would you call that? And, um, okay, uh, final arc, once again, like Chad. She's not in very much of the final arc. She does do more important things than Chad. She helps during, she helps a lot. During the final fight with Yuha, she's blocking his, you know, attacks and stuff. That moment where he's like reacting uh, to, to finally standing side by side with Kurosaki Kun. Um, and uh, also that moment where she's kind of freaking out at Ichigo's new uber, uber hollow powers. But other than that, not much. Uh, she gets her sexy ass uh, end of series outfit. So, uh, that was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, that funny moment where Chad's just like, hey. Kurosaki, so what about where he makes tits and things nice do, right? <laughs> but, um, other than that, not much. Uh, my, my biggest problem with where he may is that she, I know she's not a fighter, but she's probably in the final arc, like, I always imagine, I think I mentioned this in the chat video, maybe not, but that, the, I was at the final arc of, w in Bleach, the final few fights would be our six main heroes, Ichigo, Chad, Orihime, Uryu, Renji, and Rukia, all fighting different major enemies. So in my opinion, the final arc, she didn't need to be, like, she didn't need to fight a Quincy, but maybe fight something, like some random soul that. <laughs> um, heck, maybe actually use her Subaki. You know, her Subaki gets repaired by a Hachi, and she never actually, like, uses it again. And granted, they mentioned that it's only good against, uh, low-ranking, uh, uh, Hollows, but... Still, uh, the, the one new power she ever gets is in the full ring arc. She gets that thing where she, where like you hit the barrier and then the attack from the bear, whatever hit the barrier gets sent back at her opponent. Kind of like Diet Sogyo no Kotawari. Um, but other than that, not much. Um, how would her power, if the series went on, you know, after the final arc, how did I think that her powers might have evolved? Really, I can't think of much. Uh, may, uh, maybe she'd be able to like make bigger barriers, something like that. Uh, I kind of thought like you know she can make like these triangle barriers uh, and stuff. And in the final arc, she demonstrates one other power. She like made a she like used her barrier to make a hang glider of sorts. So you know, that was cool. Uh, but other than that, I can't think of many things. I kind of imagine like could she have a uh, made like uh weapons with it like shield like a uh, like swords or whatnot maybe not uh i was in a fan theory after asa uchis were introduced in the series about how you know ichigo they mentioned how he was not as strong as he uh could have been not only because uh quincy zangetsu was holding his power back but also his zanpak toe wasn't a real zanpak toe you know ichigo his original shikai wasn't made from an Asauchi like other Zanpak Toes. It was solidified by his pure soul. And then when he actually got an Asauchi, he was able to make his real dual-bladed Zanpak Toe. Uh, so I always kind of imagine, since Orihime's powers are similar to a Soul Reaper's Keto, could she have gotten an Asauchi and made a Zanpak Toe? Could she have gotten, you know, power? Could, could she have become a quote-unquote, could she have become a substitute Soul Reaper, just like Ginjo and uh, Ichigo did? You know, get an Asauchi, her uh, little, uh, maybe I can imagine her uh, Rika disappearing, and her Zanpak Toe would have a hilt, 
that looks just like her Rika's hairpins, and her powers would be similar but better. And I always kind of imagine that, because like I said, Hachi's Kida, well not exactly, is so, so much like Orihime's abilities. You know, could she have gotten a Soi for combat pass, you know, done the thing that Ichigo does, putting the combat pass on him and separating his soul from his body, and could she have become a, you know, proper substitute Soul Reaper? I like to imagine she could have. Maybe that's what she'll do. I don't know, she's not a fighter. Uh, one other thing about Orihime, it is kind of just, maybe just my eyes, but did her breast get smaller in the final chapter of the series? I don't know. Man, that's it. That's the problem with Hime. Uh, next video is probably gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna do one on Ruki or Renji. Uh, I'm gonna. Who are you? Is gonna be next. And I'm gonna end off the main cast with Ichigo. And I'm considering doing a video on uh, Hitsugaya, maybe Kenpachi, how their abilities could have evolved over time. But, uh,. Yeah, I mean, hopefully the Uryu video will come faster than this one did. I did that Chad video a while back. But, uh, the Bay Cylama 3, out, guys. <laughs>